In this video, I'm going to spell it all out for you. Take all my research and put it all in one big video to show and expose the many faced God. From Samaria to the janitor. So if you haven't guessed it already, it's all about Janos. So I'll be talking about the Vatican, Freemasonry, to the 9-11 ritual. Remember, I did a short video on that. To the pandemic and the mass ritual. I'm gonna show you everything all about Janos. I'm going to explain the number 11 and how it's connected to Janos because a lot of people have been asking in newer videos. All this and much, much more guaranteed to blow your mind. So, let's start with the basics. Some of the stuff that you'll just Google it and it'll tell you. His name is derived from the same root as the Latin word Janua, means a gate or an opening. Other Roman names obviously include Janos and Ionos. Pater or Pater means Janus father. He took precedence of all other gods, even that of Jupiter. That's the significance of him. When they prayed to him, they called him the king and God. As found in the Salaric hymn, Diorum Deus, I am God, I am King. The month of January is named after him. It was named Januaris or Ianorus, a pronunciation. They moved it to be first. I want to get into why and that later on. He was originally the 11th month. So that a number again. So we'll get into the 11 as well. One thing he is known for being is the God of beginnings and transitions. He was also the God of time. Duality, doorways, passages, frames and endings. And I'm going to show you just so, so much more. Like I said before, it's just going to blow your mind. So as you can see, the, this is one of the temples of Janos. It's all about the gates. Because the gates of Janos were closed in peace and opened in the times of war. The gates were only closed on three occasions. The first was 29 BC. And that is, you got it, to a 9 equals 11. But wait, there's more. It was January the 29th. Again, another 11. The gate was locked for the first time in January the 29th. How crazy is that? So this number 11 that I'll get into later on to just show you the significance of it is found everywhere in regard to Janos. The temple of Janos was in a way the official threshold of the Roman Empire. Now people get transfixed on the two heads, yet in ancient times he had four. On the oldest bridge in Rome is Janos with four heads. And here is a picture as you've seen on the screen. I showed it many times in my videos. In medieval times he had three. But when he's in his four-faced persona, he is known as Ionus Quadifrons. And this is the Arch of Janus in Rome. It's been renovated over the last few years. It's been shut for 28 to 29 years. And it's just reopened this year in a pandemic. It could even add to 11. 
and this is the, the ritual that they did for the ceremony. How creepy is that? So, let's start at the beginning in Sumeria. The first king of Sumeria was also the first god of Sumeria. He was a deified king named Ia, AI, and it also equates in Greek to 11. And he was known as Lord of the Flood or Lord of the Deep Waters. The name Ia served as the basis of god names from many other cultures, including but not limited to Yah, Iha, Yahweh, Yove, Yehovah, Allah, Janos, Ionos, Uranus, Uranus and Oans. I talked about Oans not long ago and I'll give you a quick recap on that. So we're talking about something who's tied to knowledge and that was what Oans was, the earliest instructor of man in letters, sciences and arts, especially in architecture, geometry, botany, agriculture and in all other useful knowledges was the fish god Oans or Oans, also like Dagon, the universal teacher he is known According to Barossus, he appeared in the Persian Gulf bordering on Babylonia. So he was endowed with great knowledge. And the usual appearance of this creature was that of a fish having a human head beneath that of a fish and feet like a man. And this person, persona or personage conversed with men during the day and at night he disappeared, he retreated to the waters. And according to this little article here, the Masons, their grand festival is on the day of St. John. John is a derivative of Oans, and also in Italian it is Janos and Giano, so you can see how it's all connected. Cicero says in his third book of etymologies that Conificus calls him not Janos but Ianos. So obviously then that I air becomes E.A. and we all know that's Enki and he was a Sumerian god of wisdom, intelligence, magic and his name means Lord of the Earth. And here's more contradictory evidence. Enki or E.A. or I.A. He's first hand. He's called Isamud. He has two heads. So you can just see the contradictory nature of it. But in Arcadia, in Sumeria, Babylonia, there's loads of four-headed gods yet have no names. So you can see the intrigue to me of all these dual aspects, three heads, four heads, all tied to the original EA, IA. And there's so much more I'm gonna be talking about on this later. But what's funny is, so like IA, EA, they were gods of the deep and wisdom, etc. And Janice appears as Noah. Yes, that Noah. And if you remember the song, the animals went in two by two, hoorah. Hoorah. Now if you put two animals together, what number did he make? Yes, 11. Now what I'm going to show you now is more evidence on the Noah and a little surprise. It's in an old video. It's about the island of the gods. They called it in Rome. It ties it all together for you perfectly. Some say Noah is Janice or was Janice. And I'm going to be reading some stuff out from books just to show you this and other stuff to corroborate. This is from a, an old book. Like Noah's Ark in the Old Testament, the ship on ancient coins of Janus was held by Christians to foreshadow the symbolic ship of the Christian church. And Janus, Noah's choice to settle opposite Rome on the left bank of the Tiber, prefigured St. Peter's association with the Vatican because Janus was the first Pontifact Maximus. He was also in effect the first Pope and Peter is his successor. Peter's keys preserved Janus Noah's ancient association with doors. Here's the coin I was just talking about. Two first Janus and the ship representing the church and whatnot on the other side. The article that I'm just going to read now is talking about Sadly, even though Noah himself was deified after his death, he became known to the Romans as the god Janus, who presided over everything. They depicted him as having two faces, one which looked forward into the future and the other which looked backward into the past before the flood. The imagery involved into his being, the god of doors and gates, each of which had two sides. He his image appeared on the bronze and silver coins of the Roman Empire for about 300 years. Ironically, the observer of some of these coins depicted a great ship. 
The key to the identity of Janice Snower was given to us by Giovanni Nanni, a.k.a. Annius of Viterbe. In his commentaries published in 1498 after a lifetime of research into the ancient culture of northern Italy, he announced that Janus, one of the early kings of Italy, was none other than Noah himself. From his relevant revelation, accounts of the king's accomplishments begin to emerge. It was a key that unlocked an entire arena of ancient history that had been obscured for centuries. It also led to the identification of other biblical personalities, that were known in mythology. He discovered the fascinating story about Noah's establishment and the first kingdoms of the ancient world, focus, focusing primarily on the early kingdoms of Europe. Annius pieced together a gripping historical event for almost unknown period of prehistory. He paints a coherent account of Noah's work after the flood, namely the establishment of the first colonies of the earliest nations. About about a century later, Annius' work was redacted by a London ne- Londoner named Richard L- L- Lynch, Noah, founder of Civilizations, in a modern English account of more recent works, which was later p- published in 1601. It details the last 355 years of 350 years of no- life of Noah, and the extraordinary work that he co- accomplished in establishing new society from the verge of oblivion. It also traces some early kingdoms from the beginning through the next several centuries until classical times. So that is just some some of the stuff that I found through friends on Janice being Noah. Here's a little piece out of a book, Noah, Italy and the Sea Peoples, The Problem. In his Origini della Lingua Friontina, originally published in 1548, Pier Francesca Giambellara makes an astonishing claim that the language of Dante takes its origin from Hebrew, brought to Italy by Noah, the inventor of wine, who was known as Janus, settled and died there. This belief is repeated by Fabricus in the Codex of the Old Testament in 1713, and the same story again by Fuchs writing in 1849. Um, so that was just a little snippet just to show you what I'm talking about, how Noah and Janice are linked. In my Island of the Gods video, I talk about an island shaped like a ship in Rome, in the heart of Rome. As you can see, river, the river Tiber there. And at the time, I didn't research about the Pantheon and it's linked to the pineal gland, which is a secret name for Janice. Look. There is a pantheon in the Pinecone district. And there you go. There is an island ship like a ship. It was even built like a ship. I'm going to show you some images straight after this. But some myths say it's just made by, you know, sediment. And some believe it's a ship of Noah. That, as I was talking about before in the passages, came to Italy. And this is where it settled or it got... um docks because there was a port nearby at the time and this island in my video island of the gods what's significant is this island was just full of temples to different gods um and i want to show you something interesting too that was in the video but i'll show you in pictures now coming up but it's so interesting that they're talking about janice as noah and as a, a, sh- a ship ship <laughs> shaped island in the Pinecone district, named after Janice. Just thought that was interesting to show you guys. As you can see, Tiber Island, shaped like a ship. Right, guys, thank you so far. Here's some old images that I found in the original video I did on Islands of the Gods. As you can see, the island shaped. It was actually designed and put in marble as well to look like a ship, as you can see, temples and, and whatnot looks really really beautiful and surreal this is uh, like a 3d model of what it would have looked like but what's interesting is these are the two oldest bridges in rome either side and have a guess who's on it hmm janice (laughs) but as um, other people in them articles were saying they had two heads the original janice had four heads and over the times it got whittled down to two but there you go the four-headed janice on the bridge to the island of the gods that could be the ship of Noah not the ark but a ship of Noah where he stopped and created well what I've just gone through so as you can see it's an interesting link 
as well, another one that you might have not heard of as Janice, as Noah and Noah as Janice. So before we carry on, I'll explain why Eleven is connected to Janos. Eleven is a prime number and it represents spirituality and insight. It's also a direct channel to the subconscious and is one of the most psychic numbers. And it is considered the doorway to your inner self. Talking of inner self, could the pineal gland be that door? There's 11 letters in the word pineal gland. How much coincidence is that? Do we believe in them anymore? So let's have a look. The pineal is in the brain. Just look at the brain from above. It's separated into two hemispheres. It's 11. You can't, it's so in your face. Now let's have a look at the pineal gland. You can see the two hemispheres in B and the pineal gland inside the little red area there. Well, let's take a, a closer look. The pineal, pineal gland is shown as a little red heart here in between the two temples. It looks like the brain. The occult name for the pineal is Janos. How much more do you have to be shown? It is crazy how much is connected to this entity. The pineal is Janos in between the two temples, the eleven. Janos is the god of doorways, as I've said, he is the janitor, he holds the keys. In Gematria, Janos equates to 65, which is 6 at 5, is 11. The number is significant. So Janos is 11, and the doorway, the transition, the place that everything flows through. Remember Bruce Almighty? Well, he's the janitor, he holds the keys, he was God. The keys, the frequency keys. And you can see from the image above, two pillars, 11. But just look at his hat. New York is the 11th state. It's so in your face. And you can just see it from, from that film, everything is in your face. And this is all tying into Janos. But what do we all say about frequencies? Well, remember the quote, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. The frequency keys, who's the janitor? Look at this, let's break it down. Janos is the god of archways, which is Yanni, and Tor means gate or portal. Janitor, hence why Janus is the janitor. Another famous key keeper. Remember the scene, Harry Potter. It's not every day you're a young man turns 11. Now is it? Excuse me, who are you? Rubus Hagrid, keeper of keys and the grounds at Hogwarts. Keeper of keys? Hagrid? 47 adds to 11. <laughs> Can't get any more in your face. Harry Potter, 164. 1 adds 6 at 4 equals 11. Let's talk about Freemasonry now, and obviously the famous checkerboard floor. Well, remember, Janus is a god of duality. They represent each one of his faces, the black and the white. Also in Freemasonry, the Masonic pillars of Boas and Yakin represent the number 11. You can quite see that on screen. So, Bruce Almighty, God, the janitor. Mopping the floors, he's got the pillars to the left, the stairway to heaven to the right. And on on right, we have the pillars, the Masonic pillars, the checkerboard floor, and the stairway to heaven. It's always in our faces. Some will say that the 11 represents the Temple of Solomon, the pillars outside, Jachim and Boaz. But also, the 11 also represents the patron saints of Freemasonry. St. John the Baptist and St. John the Evangelist. And it's a very old symbol. Even the Masonic people don't know what it actually means. John is derived from the Latin Iones and Ionas. And in the Roman sphere of influence, Johannes became the Italian Giovanni, also Gianni, Gian, and other derivatives. And you guessed it, those derivatives come from Janos. 
And what do people tell me? There's no such thing as a coincidence. Must be. <laughs> Must be a coincidence. Freemasonry has 11 letters. So, 11 is the gateway, the threshold between realities. And when we're looking at ancient doorways, gateways, thresholds, transitions, you notice there's always lions guarding the way. And you'll see them in modern houses as well. You'll see them everywhere. There's always lions guarding the way. And guess what? <laughs> in Gematria, lions adds to 209, which is 11. Just another coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> now, what if the Taurus field is Janos? Because he holds the keys, remember? A Tor means gateway or portal. Who is the god of them? Him. And us means the following. So I've just looked on the etymology site. It's in Old English, us. Obviously, Dutch ons is a basically plural of we. Forms of oblique cases of the first person plural. But it also means us. Greek, no, we too, Latin, nos, we, us. So it's talking about the Taurus field as our two gates, our two fields, our two gateways, our portals. But just look at it. I'll put a Janice head on now and I'll ghost it. You can see the circles represent his two heads. It's just crazy if thinking about it like this, isn't it? And I'll show you more on this later in regard to archways and being magnets. It's all linked to him. Let's look at how Janus is connected to the Vatican and Rome. So in this section, it's all about Janus, Rome and the Vatican. Now, I've done a lot of videos on the Vatican, but I'm keeping it just Janus related, obvious reasons. Anything that's connected to him or the number 11 in regards to the Vatican is going in this section. Obviously, there's a lot, so much I've done on it, but like I said, I just wanted to keep it just to Janus. Janos first turns up as the Etruscan Kulsans, the keeper of the gate. Obviously, they're from the indigenous people of central Italy. But this is where it gets crazy. We then swap over to Janos, and here he is shaking Romulus's hand. Go figure, who's got the key of Rome here? And the Vatican is Janos. Supposedly, it's Romulus who set up the founding of Rome which we know different from now. But this is where it gets even more crazier. Janus is also known as Romulo, or known as Quirinus, founder, the first king of the Roman kingdom. In Roman mythology and religion, Quirinus is an early god of the Roman state in Augustan Rome. Quirinus, also an epithet of Janus, as Janus Quirinus. And if you're a Harry Potter fan, you'll know him from the first film as Quirinus Quirrell. Quirinus means Janos, god of doorways, past and future. How crazy is this? And if you remember when he takes his turban off with Voldemort at the back, he's showing you the aspect of Janos. So remember, Janos is Ionos Pater or Pater. He's the father and god of gods. Pater meaning father. Pope, the word Pope derives from the Greek meaning father. In, in the early centuries of Christianity, this title was applied especially in the East to all bishops and all other senior clergy, and later became reserved in the West to the Bishop of Rome, a reservation made official only in the 11th century. You telling me they reserved that title in the 11th century? Janus's number and Janus being the father. That, to me, is beyond a coincidence. Right, guys, now I want to talk about the Vatican in the 11th, but to get the flavour right for anyone who's just watching it for the first time, basically, Janus, number 11, Janus was basically the first pope. He was the first key bearer, as you can see from books. You can go and research it yourself. You'll find this the same as what I've found. He's also known as Noah. That's how significant Janus is. And why I do the research I do to show people 
the significance of basically Janus and Noah. So as we know, the Lateran Treaty was an agreement signed by the Vatican and then King of Italy, King Victor Emmanuel III. More 11s, just a quince. The treaty recognised the Vatican City as an independent state under the sovereignty of the Holy See. Mussolini, the king's representative, signed on, you guessed it, the 11th. The date was the 11th of February, 1929. The Pope was Pius XI. Yeah, you got that. 11th was the king, really. It signed on the 11th and the Pope was the 11th. And in Gematria, the letter and treaty adds to, you guessed it, 11. So that's a bit of a wow for me, showing you just all the connections so far between Janos and the number 11. Most of you will already see it in a few, few of the videos, so I had to compile them into one, just so people can actually see the significance of it. So the Second Ecumenical Council of the Vatican, commonly known as the Second Vatican Council, or Vatican II, the two looks like an 11 basically. It was set up to complete unfinished tasks of the First Council, and basically to outreach and address any of the modern needs. Its opening was in Rome on the 11th of October 1962. Again, another 11. And because in Gematria you can't put numbers in, you have to write them down as letters. I put in Vatican II, it adds to 128, and you guess it, adds to 11. So this is showing you the significance of 11 and Yanis on this realm. And this is why I wanted to put this video together to show you guys. Here we have the two keys, synonymous with the Vatican and the Holy See. One the spiritual power, one the worldly power, held together by the cord. I believe that cord is the vocal cords, the voice of God, holding the two frequency keys, silver and gold. As you've seen before, silver and gold in the periodic table AUAG. In Gematria, those two equate to 11, Janice's number. Cannot be a coincidence that, as you can see, 209 equals 11. Now, when you picture two keys together, what do you see? I'll put it on the screen now. For me, they represent the number 11. Each key representing number one. And if we move it along, I've put two number ones together to represent the two keys. For me, they're identical, obviously it's just my opinion, but also if we remember from an old video, 11, as you can see in the screen, will make another famous symbol linked to the church. Yep. You got it across. Is there any coincidence? Who knows? But what can't be a coincidence is the Vatican from above is a key. It's, you can see it above now on the screen. It's a shape of a key. You telling me the God of doorways, portals, the keeper of keys, the janitor, the holder of the frequency keys, <laughs> and the first king, the first pope, and the Vatican is in the shape of a key. That is beyond a coincidence. So here's more on Janos being St. Peter. Janos holds the keys to the true esoteric religion of the original Gnostic, whom we call the first Christians. He is the initiator into Gnosis and the secret mysteries. In the Catholic religion, Janos becomes St. Peter. Yet Jesus said to Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven and whatever you loose or lose on earth should be loosed in heaven. And at the bottom of it as well, he is depicted as the holder of the keys in the heaven in the right hand and the weapon called the halberd on the other. Helen B. Polavsky states that Janus is the source of the latter role of St. Peter as the keeper of the gates of heaven with his keys. Janus was the head of the 12 gods, while St. Peter was also the head of the 12 apostles. The statue of Janus had 12 altars at its feet, symbolizing the 12 signs of the zodiac. You heard that right. The 12 great gods, the 12 months of the solar year, and the 12 apostles of the sun Christ. Janus presided over the four seasons, where St. Peter presided over the four evangelists. So you can see how influential Janus is now when you mention the zodiac. It blows people's minds away when you show them how much he's connected to. So those 12 houses, those signs, are assigned when you were born and that energy influences your Taurus field, your life. 
And what do all houses have in common? They have doors. And who's the god of those? Because don't forget, Janice has those keys to heaven and earth. Now, the Vatican has a special holy door. And that door is St. Peter's. Well, you know who St. Peter is now. And as we now know, Peter, Peter is father and the first pope. Janos, but Janos also has another symbol. It's the IYI, it's a very old symbol used around Europe. And as you can see, you can see it on the holy door. It's a it's the crucifixion. But it appears it comes from the holy temple of Janos. It's his doorway and posts. So there you can see just how influential Janos is. That even the IYI is from his temple. And what we'll do is we'll zoom in and you'll see a cockerel on an arch. Who's the god of arches? Now people said the cockerel's associated with St. Peter because he denied God three times by the time, you know, the cock crows three times. And as you know, the St. Peter, so he's associated with the cockerel. Birds he's holding the keys. But what if they've used it before they got it from someone else? Janos is pictured here with the key and the cock you can see they are both one in the same and it's just wow it just blows me away when we when you get down to the bones of it and you find out that it's all coming from janos since the time of the protestant reformation they claim revelation 13 18 refers to the pope as the enemy of the true faith his title they say is Vicarius Philae Dei, or Deo, Vicar, the Son of God. And by using the value of the Roman numerals, the sum of those letters in that title equate to 666. And you can see an example just on your screen now of the letters and Roman numerals equating to numbers, and it basically equates to 666. So that is what the Protestants and the Adventists equate to saying basically his title relates to the Mark of the Beast. The Catholic Church deny these claims. They state that Vicarius Philae Deo is not the Pope's title, it is never used in any official church document. His title is Vicar of Christ, Vicarus Christi. The church go on to say, This false identification of the beast in Revelation 13, 18 with the Pope has often been made in Seventh-day Adventist literature. The church states, if they use the same numbering scheme for founder of the Adventists, Ellen Gould White, that it would basically equate to 6662. So I've talked about the serpent already today and just mentioned Revelation. This is, is this a coincidence about a revelation? And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ Revelation 12:17, and as you can see 12:17 adds to 11 Janice's number are they one in the same or is it just a coincidence I'll leave that up for you guys so a mention of a dragon I put into a gematria Janice is the dragon we got 1 3 2 5 1 add 3 add 2 add 5 equals you got it 11 <laughs> Vicarus Vicarius Philae Deo or Dei again 1163 all adds up to 11 so it was just intriguing me this and obviously I've, I've put in Janice is the Beast got 173 which equates to 11 again so as you can see the names that they're using in the last clip were obviously the Serpent Dragon and Janice and the Beast is all of them all equates to his number 11 and also before that I mentioned Ionus Pater Janice the father even that equates to 11 so come on guys 
Whatever you think, I just think there's too much coincidence now to ignore this. I've not long talked about this in new videos, but I still find it pertinent to put it in because everyone doesn't watch all the videos. So I have to put it in. So guys, what do the first Pope and King have in common and it sits in the Vatican courtyard? Yep, the occult name of the Pineal being named after them. And we'll see all the posts and people post about it all the time. I mean, look at this picture. We've seen it loads of times. But people don't tell you, all of them are connected to Janos. <laughs> so here you go. Here's a little clip just showing you that very thing. As you can read here, in occultism, the pineal gland is regarded as a link between the objective and the subjective states of consciousness. Or in exotic terminology, the visible and visible worlds of nature. In the religions of the Latins, it was therefore referred to as Janus, the two faced god and keeper of the gates of sanctuary. This divinity was archetype or antitype of Saint Peter, who succeeded him as the warder of the heavenly portals and who carries the two keys of office one to the golden mystery of the spirit and the other to the silver mystery of the body. So you can see the significance of pine cones and the pineal gland and Janus is the occult name for it. That just blows my mind every time I see that because we see a lot of people talking about that, don't we? And it's Janus. Look at the Pinecone Courtyard. An extension to the Vatican Library was dug beneath the Pinecone Courtyard, inaugurated by, by John Paul II. Oh, looks like 11. It is a veritable anti-nuclear bunker built entirely in reinforced concrete on two floors. Two, one at one, is... 11. Altogether, the extension measures 31,000 square meters and contains no fewer than 43 kilometer shelves. Let's add them two last numbers up. 3 add 1 for 31,000 is 4, add 4 is 8, and the 3 is 11. So, even the statistics of the new Pinecone Courtyard reinforced Vatican Library add up to 11 and it's on two floors. It's that plain and it's in that in your face. I had to include this and you'll see why. I didn't, I didn't know of her. But this is the first female Pope. They say it's a myth. Pope Joan or Joanna, aka Ions Angelicus. 855 to 857 was according to legend, a myth. They say she's a myth. <laughs> like they do. But her name is a derivative of Janus again. So the only Pope and it's named after Janus. But look at the numbers. 855 to 857. 8 at 5 at 5 at 8 at 5 at 7 equals 38. 3 at 8 equals 11. Tell me that. <laughs> How many times can I say, oh it's not a coincidence, it's not a coincidence, that a rain, if true, adds to 11 just blows me away every time that does so what you're seeing here on the left is a monogram of Johannes Angelicus the female Pope Ions S above and O below designed the square with classic ancient rims usually three-dimensional design now on the right is a monogram of the later Pope Johannes the eighth design firmly dated to 875 but the O is at the top and the S is at the bottom now they reckon uh, the the your hands the female pope it could have been faked yeah at the bottom if you can read it it talks about them the monograms and um, emblazoned on medieval coins point towards the existence of both pope john the eighth and pope Johannes and angelicus or joan or joanne so they're saying she's faking one minute and then she's not faking the other it's crazy but i had to include it because the first female pope if true was named after janos he always has to be first. From the beginning, I've been showing you COVID is a ritual to Janos. I mean, just look at it. The word coronavirus has 11 letters. In simple geometry, coronavirus adds to 155, which is 11. Face mask, 146 adds to 11 mutated virus that we hear a lot 173 adds to 11 
when it's a coincidence, not a coincidence, guys, COVID-19 is 11. Remember, they changed the name to SARS-CoV-2 on the 11th of February. <laughs> 11. But guess what? In Gematria, SARS-CoV-2 adds to 155 is 11. Guys, it's all for 11. So, this pandemic ritual all to Janos. His month is January. And look, the first known death associated with this happened on the 11th. What are the odds on that, guys? All these 11s that you've seen and will see. It's just crazy. So to finish off this section, I just wanted to show you, remember, the Lambda variant. Well, Lambda in Greek alphabet is the number 11. So that's why I had to show it. Plus, if you look at the, the symbol for it, it looks like stylized A. Well, if you're into sci-fi or remember the, the TV series Stargate, it's the same symbol. Isn't it a coincidence that Stargate is about gates, travel, and we have a god called Janos, who is a god of doorways and portals. <laughs> Just a coincidence. Now, this is from The Who. The Lambda variant is one of 11 official SARS-CoV-2 variants recognised by them, the World Health Organization. It was first detected in Peru and has spread to 29 countries. Two and nine? 11. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> That's just a coincidence, they say. Now, we also have the Mu variant. Well, if you remember my video on Lemuria, where I first showed you the Festival of the Dead, it comes on 9, 11, and 13, and it'll appear in a minute when I'm just recapping on the 9 11 video. Again, 11. All these 11s is them showing you a ritual to Janus, paying homage to the god who goes by so many names. And we can't f forget the first mask ritual because wearing a mask makes you two-faced. It makes you Janos-faced. But it also changes your persona, your personality. It's all in the wording. The personality, the Latin word for persona, means mask or false face. Personality includes everything about the person. So you put a face mask on, you will be changing that personality of that person. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have the exits and the entrances and the one man in his time plays many parts of his act, being seven ages. Hmm, entrances, exits, who's the god of doorways? <laughs> Who is the god of the act halls? Look at the screen actors guild logo. Hmm, comedy and tragedy, the two-faced nature. <laughs> You can't make this up, it's all in your face. Originally called Novel Coronavirus, which means obviously Roman Crown Virus. But this will blow you away. So it talks about, we learned that Janus had two faces, one before, the other behind. And that he gave his name to a river and to a mountain on which he settled. He is said to have been the first who invented crowns. Say so what? He invented crowns. He is Novel Coronavirus. He is the Roman crown. How about that? <laughs> that would just blow you away. It also says he created ships, barges, and coined money of brass. Hence, it happens that several towns in Greece, Italy, and Sicily coined money with a double head with a barge on the reverse, or a crown, or a ship. So it just shows you the significance of Janos. I mean, when you have your test, they sent it off to a machine that is named after him. Yeah, the Janos G3 PCR workstation. So all your, your tests, all your, your swabs and all that malarkey go to a machine named after him. And people are telling me Janos is insignificant and this is just all a coincidence. <laughs> it's crazy. So in this section, it's all about Bill Gates and some 11s that I found about him. It'll blow your mind. And I just thought, well, you know what? I want to use the meme I created, me and the dubs. Uh, this went super viral. So here you go. I mean, you just look at this. Bill Gates <laughs> is named after Janice. 
crazy. So this first section is just a little bit on Bill Gates. Bill Gates got married in January, Janice's month. But look closely, he got married on the first day of the first month, which is, yep, an 11. Bill Gates in Gematria equates to 11. <laughs> it's crazy. Even Melinda is an 11. Melinda Gates, there you can go, 11. But wait, she's known as Melinda French Gates now. I've got you covered. 164 equals 11. Some people will say, Paul, the clones. Again, 11. Windows 11 got announced to the world on the 11th, on June the 24th, 2021. And it's Windows 11. No coincidence there. Let's go to the building, the Microsoft headquarters. It's building 92. You got it? 11. <laughs> but listen to this. There's no secret I worked really hard on my idea to get as good as I could. And then knocks on door after door out of 1,200 people. 11 said yes. Those 11 made me a millionaire. 11? And guess what? He has 11 rules. You can't make this shit up, as I say. But guess what? He was born on October the 28th, 1955. As you know, October means 8. So add the date, add 2, add 8, add 1, add 9, add 5, add 5. You got it. Comes to 38, 11. It's not like Windows and Bill Gates have had anything called Janice, is it? <laughs> not like I'm just showing you on the screen Windows Janice. Now, this was the code name because this is what it was going to call and for for whatever reason it never came to fruition remember the old music thing that microsoft had and bill gates called zoon it was a failed attempt to fight the 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 apple ipod and and uh, itunes but if we reverse zoon it spells anus anus and anos and janos one in the same and you might be thinking, is that it, Paul? No. <laughs> so I'll read this out. The Zoom isn't just an iPod rival. It's part of Microsoft's efforts to further enslave consumers to profit engine designed to suit the desires of the music industry, ignore consumers' fur rights, and destroy open content. This is in an article. Over the top, take a look at history's Microsoft Microsoft efforts in the music industry and judge for yourself. So the danger of DRM, which was this software, uh, it described the world before DRM and the complications that killed a decade of digital products prior to the iPod. It has also introduced a new god Microsoft hoped would take over the digital universe, and his name is Janos. Wait, they wanted to, to introduce a new god that would take over the digital universe, and his name is Janos. Nah, that's just a coincidence, that Paul. Not the same Janos that you're talking about. So, the watchful eye of Janos. Microsoft worked with media producers to design a comprehensive technology framework and DRM system named after Janos. The Roman god of beginnings, endings and namesake of January was portrayed with two faces, we know this. Like its namesake, Microsoft Janos planned to keep its eyes on everything with earth-type solutions for the paranoid entertainment industry that would allow them to both sell and rent lockdown digital files. Rented files could be set to playback for a certain time period, obviously known as time, and players are then self-destruct. Windows media files could also be set to allow or deny duplication. Burning to CD or copy into a portable player, portable system would be forced to register within a central authority. So if the, if the user stopped paying ongoing rental subscription fees, the device would stop playing. Microsoft planned to license Janos to hardware makers and online stores to create a secure, comprehensive platform for distribution songs and movies. The industry largely assumed that Microsoft's DRM technology would quickly become the de facto standard and offered little criticism of Microsoft's technology. Now, it just makes you think, doesn't it? Will this be making a comeback? Because we've heard little rumours, so especially Elon Musk. And you can see his tweet, bring back the Zune. It's time. Associated with time again is Janos. So could it be making a comeback? I think it could. I believe there were no planes on 9-11. But why? But why did they say there were? Because 
And this is the big reason. 9-11 was a ritual. A ritual to Janos. A ritual to his number. The number 11. 9, 11, 9, add 1, add 1 equals, you got it, 11. The Twin Towers, as you can see, 11. The number 11 represents a door, a portal, and a transition. Even Freemasonry have it as an ancient symbol. And I've talked about this in the last few weeks, as you know. That symbol shows the patron saints of Freemasonry. Saint John the Baptist and Saint John the Evangelist. John is a derivative of Janos. The Twin Towers stood 110 stories high. Wait, 110, isn't that 11? 1 add 1 equals 11. In antiquity, leaders and gods lived in the north. So you would look up to them symbolically. What plane did they say hit the north tower? It was American Airlines Flight 11. The flight had 11 crew. The pilot was called John Ogonavsky. So John again. They say 92 were killed. Again, 11. 92, 9 or 2 equals 11. American Airlines equals AA, A equals 1, so two AAs equals 11. New York is the 11th state. This is one of the most iconic images that we have always seen of New York. Do me a favour. Count the number of workers. I count 11. And there you go guys, there's a little section on New York. We love star forts and their different designs. They're beautiful. And those patterns remind us of cymatics. And who's the god of keys? The frequency keys. What if I told you Janos taught humans how to build walls? That point would make you go, hmm, wouldn't it, considering star forts and Tartary. And most towns and cities were star forts. Here's a clip from an old video showing that very point. For most of you who are just new to the channel, most of the people who are, you know, of old and have been here from the beginning know how it work. I just show information that I found. I'll leave it up to you, your good minds, your great minds, 
to put it together, to agree, to disagree, to help with your own theories. But it's information. Everything is information. Rightly or wrongly, it's information. You can discard it, you can keep it. And I just found this very fascinating and it changes the way we look at things. So let's start from here. Janice, the fabled son of Uranus or Uranus or Uranus, how you want to pronounce it, because the original Greek way has an O on the front, so it's our, our, our anus or Uranus. I have seen lots of texts stating that Janice is Uranus. And we've seen this through history. Wives being husband, you know, wives being daughters and whatnot. It's very hard to pinpoint what relationship these are. But for this information, Janus, the fable son of Uranus, or Uranus, is believed to have been the most ancient king of Italy, who hospitably received Saturn. When as a fugitive from Crete, the father of Jupiter, or you can call you can call him Jove too, father of Jupiter, banished by his son, arrived in a ship on the shores of Latium. Now, in that is a Greek name, you, uh, you know, Uranus or Uranus. I think it's Coelus, which is his Roman name for the father. But you know, this is just how these these guys have wrote it. So I'm just letting you guys know. So he arrived in a ship on the shores of Latium, which the, the ship is actually still there. I've done a video on it called Island of the Gods. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a little picture now on screen or a few pictures on screen. <laughs> I don't know if I've got music or anything. So you can see the picture is still there. Also, see, this is what confusing is about history because Janus is also known as Noah Janus or Janus Noah. So you can see the reference to building ships and it will show you in later on in this. So he arrived in a ship on the shores of Latium. According to the accounts of Aurelius Victor, Janus was the mastermind of the age. He basically created the golden age in which he lived. He was the founder of a city called Giniculum and the hill still there. It's the eighth hill in Rome. Eighth and it's just like the infinity symbol. So you can see he called, you know, founded the, the city called Janiculum. He taught his people the divisions of the year, the use of shipping and of money. He invented crowns. I've covered this so many times in different videos. People are like, yeah, we know. Then the rules of justice. I've, I showed you that as well. Maritime law. Right. So he did the rules of justice. And the mode of living happily under the authority of the laws. I've showed you this about the laws too, in the scales and so much in all my videos that I've covered. He also instructed them how to build temples and to honour the God with sacrificial worship. Right? So just tell me before we carry on the last bit. So star fort, they are surrounded by, by what? Mm, by walls. Right? So if... You find a text saying this. So the gods were sacrificial worship to surround the cities with walls. So Janice taught people how to build walls around cities. A.K.A. star forts, bastion forts, bulwarks, whatever you want to call them. He taught people how to surround the cities with walls. So, he taught us to surround our towns and cities with walls. That's if you go off the information that we've provided. Interesting though, isn't it? You tie that in with he's the god of frequencies because people talk about how the star forts look like cymatics. <laughs> it's just wow, isn't it? And also, he's tied to Uranus. So, I asked in an old video of star forts the locations of Uranus's castration, the blood falling. Remember, Roman Janus had 12 altars, the Kalends, and Uranus had 12 children. So the similarities between the story. Here, I can't zoom in too much because it blurs, but you can see Noah at the top. I do take a, like a screenshot for you. So Noah's at the top showing you that they're all one in the same. It's just crazy. So Noah, as I was showing before, is Uranus. And in Rome, Uranus and Noah Ah, Janos, part of the heavenly court, etc, etc. So it just blows your mind, doesn't it? And in this video, hopefully, I've done that just to show you the wow of 
Janos is just the key to finding what I have and how much this basically integrates with our society. Janos is everything. Have you heard of the Great Vowel Shift? It's the greatest reset ever happened and no one knows. The Great Vowel what? I've never heard of that. Well, not many people have. It was hidden in plain sight. Between the 12th, 13th and the 19th centuries, they changed everything. How we wrote, how we spoke. And they introduced the doctrine, what we today call science. So let's start by breaking the word vowel down. Vowel becomes vowel, a vow to God. And the God in question is the entity known as Janus. Known to them as God of God's Jewish Deorum Este. E1 that's not sure what vow vow means we'll be talking about vow l the vow to god the vow is a solemn promise a set of solemn promises committed one to prescribed role calling of course of action typically to a marriage or a monastic career another one is a solemnly promise to do a specific specified specific eyed thing an archaic Dedicated to someone or something, especially a deity. I vowed myself to this enterprise as an example. Origins are from the Latin votum. Vow, vote. And we put votes and we put them in a black box. So we are promising and dedicating ourselves to that deity. Or the person who has been chosen. So it comes from, like I said, the old English vow from Latin votum. And I'll just put this on the screen there. In ancient Roman religion, a votum, plural vota, is a vow or a promise made to a deity. The word comes from the past participle of the Latin verb voveo or vovea, a vow or a promise. So the great vowel shift is, as we can see, a vow to El, a vow to God, a promise. Because... That is what I see <laughs> in the word when I broke it down. Great vowel. Vow to L. And as I've just showed you, the actual God they are vowing to is none other than Janus or Janus. So let's look at the vowels. The vow to God. They are A-E-I-O-U. And some of you will be saying, and sometimes, why? But what's funny, and this just got me straight away when I originally made this, and it's the fact that an IOU, abbreviated from the phrase IOU, is usually an informal document acknowledging debt. An IOU differs from a promise, promissory note, in that an IOU is not a negotiable instrument and does not specify repayment terms such as time of repayment. So in a vow, in a vowel, we have a vow to God and we have an IOU. We are in debt. Who we are, who are we in debt to? Who do we owe? What do we owe? So these are the things that's always intrigued me about the vowels and the vows to God. Are they saying that we are in debt? Is this why they are taking energy or something? What are we 
owing and what do we have to repay so some of these are questions that still wrap my brain today but i just thought you know what i'm just going to redo the great of all shift video and i still can't get my head around this with the vowels you have the vow to god and you have an iou in those vows who are we in debt to it's obvious they believe it's janos janus we know people don't understand the actual significance of the word, the magic spell, the significance, the danger that can, can be created from the power of the word. This is my favourite quote because I believe it says a lot. The real secret of magic is that the world, the world is made of words and that if you know the words that the world is made of, you can make it whatever you wish, Terence McKenna. But just look at the world. The world, word, world, there's an L missing, L, well you only have to put an E in front of it, L is a God. So you can just see the significance of even in the word, word and world. So we just have to be vigilant on how we speak. I mean, I try and watch what I say, don't say too much curse words. I mean, I've done the video on curses as you guys know, but the significance, just how we speak is forgotten about and people will say the great vowel shift it's only a bit of a change in pronunciations and things like that they just don't understand the significance that this period in history has and what has happened in it and this is in this video i'm going to be highlighting just how important this um period in history actually is and why the ramifications of it being the greatest reset no one knows coming up now is a sub clip remember from terence mckenna's quote and this one the world is made up of words remember the original word of creation from god what if i could tell you that was janos because remember john is a derivative of janos and his number of janos is 11 this will blow your mind so logos is tied to the word right and remember john 1 1 which blew me away it was both janis and his number 11 in the beginning was the word that as we know is logos and the word was with God and the word was God so whatever the word is is God now what I found is not only just shock me to my roots I'm just like no way I can't believe it so as you know I like working with words so I looked for that anagram of word and the best one I could get was D O R W because it really sounds like door, like door, like a little accent. And people always talk about Idrisil as the tree. Well, guys, this will blow you away. The Proto Indo European word for oak is D O R W, door. And that became the word for a door. So the oak is a doorway between worlds as it lives between the worlds tell me that isn't wow and as i've shown you in previous videos yanis is also known as the oak so the word of god is the world contains the l l and the word is a door a door between worlds right guys back to the great vowel shift aka the babble effect so the great, the great vowel shift was a major change in the pronunciation of the English language that took place in England between 1350 and 1700. Well, as you can see from the little picture I've just shot on the screen, people are even arguing about that date. So it goes from about the 14th to about the 18th and 19th. So roughly, give or take, about 500 years in history, as you can see. And it was first coined by Otto Jefferson. Uh, because the English spelling was becoming standardised in the 15th and 16th centuries, the Great Vowel Shift is responsible for many of the, the, pe the peculiarities of English spelling. So this is why I want to cover it. In this time period, they changed everything. Languages are spells. And we are casting them daily. So if you're changing the power of the spell and who they are vowed to, it, it means a lot. The values of the long vowels from the main f form the main difference between the pronunciation of Middle English and Modern English. And the Great Vowel Shift is one of the most historical events marking the separation of the Middle and the Modern English. Before the Great Vowel Shift, 
these vowels had continental values, much like remain, those remaining Italian and liturgical Latin. However, during the Great Vowel Shift, the two highest long vowels became diphthongs and the other five underwent an increase in tongue height, with one of them coming to the front. And if you don't know what a diphthong is, if I, I've even pronounced that right, I'll just briefly give a description of that. A diphthong is a vowel sound in which the tongue changes position to produce the sound of two vowels. Diphthong is a single sound produced when two vowels, one dominant in duration and stress, and one reduced in duration and stress, are paired together in a sequence. So that is basically a quick, actually technically what they actually saying is the reason behind the great vowel shift. And now coming up is all what I, in, you know, interpret all what happened in this period that I call the greatest reset ever. So according to the story, a united human race in the generations following the great flood, speaking a single language and migrating eastward, they agree to build a city and a tower tall enough to reach heaven. God observing the city and tower confounds their speech so that they can no longer understand each other and scatter them around the world. What a better way to reset a population, a popular stand to change the language. It's proven. If you're not div if you're not united, sharing a common goal, you're not speaking together, the communication, it creates di division, obviously. So what a better way than to change the language? And this is what the Great Vowel Shift did. It was a vow, L, the vow to God. They changed the vows to another God. They I O would all of us. Now, in this video, you're going to see everything. I'm going to put loads of videos and content in it just to show you how significant this period really was. So as we know, Tower of Babel was the first start of a reset in language terms um, according to the Bible and whatnot the uh, God whether it's the big G or the small G didn't like the fact that there was one language so he destroyed Tower of Babel and hence from that point there was more than one language see it's easy to forget about language being controlled as a reset but um, it always gets to me about obviously Tower of Babel and then the word Babel. Mid 13th century to prattle, to utter words indistinctly like a baby, akin to other Western European words for stammering and prattling, which I do a lot of, attested from the same era, some of which probably were borrowed from others, all probably ultimately imitative of baby talk. The Greek Latin Babylus, Babel, Greek Barbaros, non Greek speaking. No direct connection with Babel can be traced through association with that may have affected the senses, meaning to talk excessively, is attested from the 13th, uh, 15th century. So you have the 13th century and the 15th century. If you went down, Babel, 15th century, can you see me point? This is an etymology online. Now, <laughs> All etymology you will find will start at the 12th, you'll get the odd 11, but the most is the 12th and the 13th and onwards because it's that period of the great vowel L shift. You can see if we move down, cycle babble, obviously that's an early one, 1976, babbling 1400, and it's associated with one with 1580, bobbin 1520. You can see my point, babe, 14th century, all the words got changed and that's why all etymology will start at the same period. Let me just demagnify so I can show you something. I'll just get back to 100%. Trending words, we'll just, go, you, we'll just use the trending words and then that way it's fair. You can see trending words here, number one, apple, and the first date that you'll come across so I don't want to read it all out, is 1340. And then if you come back, Apple of Discord, 14th century. So you can just see the words 1340, 14th century. The, app, the word word 
and you will see can we find a date oh my god 1550 word 12th century to utter 1610 to put into words so you can just see again nice 13th century family early 15th century human mid 15th century and belonging to man 12th century so you can see in that date again mother i can't see her date anywhere the 16th century mother nature 16th century mother vert like i said i'm not going to read them all uh, mother early 15th century intransitive to be a mother so 15th century again data 1640 cross old english cross let's find a word this might be it no you go 12th century and invention of the cross 14th century so again from that period jack <laughs> uh 1650 jack tar is that's an interesting jack tar sailors Jack Tar, obviously Tartaria could be. And you can see 17th, 15th, again, move down. Jack, 14th century, 1860, and again, the Jack up, hoist up. So you can see why it interests me so much that old uh, folk, old English folk, common people, laity, men. Any data that we can find that I can show you guys. Um that one says 1850 oh there you go folks is tested from 15th century old english folk f-o-l-c so um, what i'm showing is i've just done a top 10 trending words on etymology online and they're all in that period that i'm talking about that is why it just intri intrigues me so much that all the language was changed just like in the tower of babel some of mankind's most terrible misdeeds have been committed under the spell of certain magic words or phrases and that is so true author james bryant Collant. words cast spells that's why it's called spelling words are energy use them wisely it's in the name people just don't know understand the significance of your words now the great vowel shift i'm going to be showing you some examples of word changes Here's one for you. So these are shapes at the basic level. Have a guess after the great vowel shift, what the word shape became or become. Now, don the lift music. I'll give you a few seconds. That's right, shape becomes sheep. Okay, here's the next one coming up now. Let's reverse it. What word vowel shifted to booth? Okay, okay, don the lift music. The answer is boat. I wonder if you got any of these guys. In no particular order, let's look at what they call breakthroughs in this period. And this will just show you how deep this really is. So the great vowel shift was a changing of the vowels to God. Now, one of the big, huge things, the doctrines is science is the religion now the one of the biggest things created in this time period it was the, the actual method of how they collect information or solve problems it's called the scientific method it is the problem observation hypotheses experimentation data analysis your conclusion and then you repeat if need be so the hugest biggest thing 
to their religion, their science, is the actual method, and that was created in this time period. So, science is their religion. I've just showed you the scientific method. Remember the scientific method I used and showed you purpose, P, research, A, hypothesis, H, experiment, E, analysis, A, and conclusion, C. So, what do we have? We have the actual first letters of the scientific method actually spell preach. That is a while to me. It's, it's weird when you don't look at these things, but the scientific method spells preach. It is a religion. They are preachers. Oh, they are... Preacher. Preacher or preachers, plural. A person who preaches, especially a minister of a religion. Science is the religion. In plain black and white there now, guys. Preacher. I just thought it was too much of a coincidence not to put that actually in about how this, that scientific me method I found spell Preacher. Preacher. Or preach, obviously. <laughs> but they are preachers. Though it shows you how important it is. And then what's bigger than the printing press? In 1440, German inventor Johann Gutenberg invented a printing press process that with refinement and increased mechanisation remained the principal means of printing until the late 20th century. The inventor's method of printing from the movable type, including the use of metal moulds and alloys, a special press and oil based inks, allowed for the first time the mass production of printed books, their spells, their doctrine and their indoctrination which was carried over with the actual changing of the model of this realm. Copernicum heliocentrism is the name given to the astronomical model developed by Nicholas Copernicus and published in 1543 in the Great Vowel Shift. The model positioned the sun near the centre of the universe, motionless with the earth and other planets orbiting around it in circular paths, modified by epicycles and at uniform speeds. So you can see a pattern now. Things that we still use today are part of the indoctrination, a part of the spell, a part of the vow L, part of the vows to God, are huge things, the scientific method, the shape of this realm. The printing press. Everything. You can just see how important all this science, the real religion, was to them. It's just crazy. So, Janos, main names in Rome are Ianos and Janos, I and J. Now, people in the community have been basically theorising and debating for ages on what the I and the J represents. And along comes me <laughs> with my theory of the Great Vowel Shift and Janos. As you can see a few examples of the I and the J on the screen. Well, I can tell you, it's for Janos, the God. This is what the period is all about. Remember, Janos is the Kalends which calendar comes from. Then you get the statement, well, the letter J is a recent thing. I know. And you'd be right. The letter J was formed in 1524 by the guy seen in the picture. His name is Gian Giorgio Trasino, who was credited with the letter J. What do you notice? Yep. His name is a derivative of Janos. And the formation of the letter was in, yep, you got it, in the Valshift period. It was all done by design. Another thing they did in the Valshift, <laughs> and this just blew me away when you first see it, is that they lost 11 days. 11 days. And this was in 1752. 11 days. It could have been anything else, but no, 11 so if we go back a bit further and you look at the screen this is Numa Pompilus and he's credited with adding January at the beginning he did this in 452 BC yep that's another 11 4 add 5 add 2 equals 11 how many times can we say 
There's no such thing as a coincidence. It's all done by, de by design. It's all a ritual to Janus when Eleven is involved. It is crazy, guys. And this is why I made this video, just to show you how in your face it is. So I'm an evil villain. I want to do a huge reset. What better way and then to change how we talk, how we write, which is the great vowel shift. But I'm now renaming it the Babel, the Babel effect. Now, what would you need also to go hand in hand? You would need an epidemic, a plague of some sort. Oh, say what? I'll create the Black Death, the Black Plague. Just look at the date, 1347, 1351, the start of the great vowel shift. 200 million deaths plus worldwide goes hand in hand wipe out the population then bring in the great vowel shift less people to change the spell makes sense doesn't it guys i mean just look even further on in 15th century you had smallpox 1520 56 million deaths so you keep culling the population thus making it easy for you to control people with a new language a new way of thinking all the new science the religion you are remember they are a preacher so they whatever they are preaching there's less people to conform and indoctrinate so it really is a smart way of doing it from an evil point of view and it all ties in as well with genoa because that's where the black death the plague came through to europe it's like it's called the gateway of europe and genoa yep genoa is connected to janus it's actually named after him and i can't let it slide who founded Genoa? Geneva too. Geneva, Genoa. Janice, the first king of Italy, the progeny of giants who founded Genoa in the days of Abraham. So Genoa is tied directly to Janice. So we all know what's going on and how many things I've posted and done videos and shown Janice with this so-called pandemic. And as you can see, the city's current name derives from the Latin word meaning knee. Hmm, let's take the knee. But according to other theories, it derives from Janus because Genoa, like the god, has two faces. So Janus is connected to Genoa too. I couldn't let that slide without even reminding you guys. Janos was a giant too, as you've just seen. And Gian is a derivative of Janos. So Gian, Janos, now put a T on it, it's giant. Must be another coincidence. So, giants are named after Janos. So, what you see now is I'm going to talk about Genoa a little bit because it's connected to Janos. And the West capitalism model was invented in Genoa. Yeah, the same Genoa that is named after and connected to Janos. The first Rothschild style bank was the Bank of St. George. And if you're wondering, yes, it's in Genoa. The bank was also used as a jail for Marco Polo. And you'll see some decoration around Genoa. Do you notice anything? Oh yes, Giannis Two Heads is on top of the crown. He is the crown, remember? But also if you notice the flag, it is the English flag. And the English paid Genoa for the privilege to fly that flag. Crazy, isn't it? And also here is the planet Uranus. Well, some of you might not know it was originally called George's Star. So Uranus, Janus is connected to St. George. Here is the Arch of Janus. Right next to it is the Basilica of San Giorgio in Velabro. Just look how close it is. To Janice's arch. Can't get any closer. And according to the founding legend of Rome, the church was built near where Roman history began. And the arch is there, and the church is there, and it's St. George and Janos. Just blew me away every time I see that. Just look, you can't. This is why I tell people to research Janos, it just leads you to so many rabbit holes look Janos as I showed you earlier is 11 but so is Saint George in Gematria just wow now let's go back to Genoa a little bit because 
the, the Genoa Cathedral, you know, with um, Janus's inscription of being, being a giant, it was consecrated in 1118. That's another 11. 1 add 1 add 1 add 8 equals 11. How many coincidences? Again? Look, what's in front of the church? Either side, two lions, remember? The lions represent number 11, 2. And always guard doorways or portals. And after the first crusade, the Templars brought the remains of St. John the Baptist to Genoa. Hence, he became the patron saint of Genoa with St. Lawrence and St. George. The rest of the saints are preserved in the chapel on the left na nave, right? So it also should not be confused with the Maltese cross because there's loads of things on the church. In fact, Genoa was not only the Knights Templar headquarters, but also the Knights Hospitaller. So how crazy is that? So Genoa is named after Janos, he is a derivative of John as well, and John the Baptist's head, which appears on the Freemasonry patron saints of and, and eleven, was in that church and in Genoa. How crazy is that? Everything seems to connect to the entity known as Janos and John. It, it just blew me away, guys, and hopefully you're enjoying this video, because I know I am. And if you want to watch the full video on Genoa, it's titled The Genoa Conundrum. Genoa is the capital of Liguria and is named after Janos. This is how I connected Genoa to Tartaria. Now guys, this could be a complete coincidence and it could just be a fluke. But as I just showed you, like Genoa is part of Liguria. It's like the, you know, the, the area. Now, this is how I originally found Janos, obviously by looking into Genoa. And I was looking at Tartaria as well at the same time. This is like a couple of years ago. It's one of, one of the first videos, not one of the first, but you know, quite near the beginning when I started making videos. And I'm like... That's so what I look into Tartaria and I like to break the words down. So obviously if you put Tartaria, you just get Tartaria. Now what I did is I just split it up into three, like phonetically, Tartaria. You know what I mean? Tartaria. You know, like that. I'll show you now. And you can actually see on the screen. So splitting the two, there's a T-A. And now I did the R-T-A. And the last bit is R-I-A. And... Look what I got. Now, it could be a complete freak. It's, it's asked me, do did you mean Tartaria? So you can see, Tartaria. And obviously that is a Latin version of Tartary. And look at the Latin. It gives me R-T-A-E Liguria. Now, I know some people say, well, you just put R-I-A at the end of this Tartaria. And Liguria's got R-I-A on it. But it's not got everything else. And you can just, it's just intriguing. How was I meant to find Genoa to look into that and then find Janus? Because I was just looking at Tartaria, like I say, and I put, I split it up as you can see on the screen, and it gave me RTA -E Liguria. And I'm thinking, I've never heard of Liguria. Is it a place? Is it a thing? Just what is it? So obviously, I typed it into the converter and. Basically, that's what I got. So I'll just do it for you. Even now, when I'm on the screen, Liguria says me typing it. And obviously, the first thing it gave me was this Liguria. So as you can see, I'll just move it across because I've, I've screened, I've made the screen bigger so you can actually see. So you can see, Liguria is a crescent-shaped region in northwest Italy. Its Mediterranean coastline is known as the Italian Riviera. So as you can see, Genoa is its capital. So it's just the Crescent, the Crescent. And obviously, if you've watched my Janus videos, you'll notice Janus carries sometimes a Crescent moon or stands on it. So just thought that was intriguing. And that's how I originally found Genoa. To look at Genoa all those years ago where I found Janus. I just put Tartaria in, I split it up into three. And for some reason, it spewed out Liguria. Now there you go, Liguria and Genoa as its capital. Was it meant to be? I just do not know, but I just found it fascinating, and that is how I linked Genoa 
to Liguria. Let's come back to the present and look at the Hollywood Circus. There's a lot Janice related in this I want to touch on. So many channels talk about transgender, transvestitism in Hollywood. I don't go into great detail, but because there's other good channels doing that, and I'm going to recommend one in a minute for you to look at if you're interested in this. But Janis, or Janos, is the god of transitions and transformations. He's the god, remember? So they want to copy him. So this is why it's all connected to Janos. Right, let's look at the word. Transition. We'll move it up. So transition, because obviously transgender transvestite you are moving from one to another and this is not me looking at a hollywood actor or actress or actor and saying they used to be a man they used to be a woman that's not my thing if you're interested in that please check out a good friend of the channel is antidote for maya uh, she, she doesn't just do transgender transvestite stuff she does hell of a lot more and if you're into all that stuff please give it a check out but this is about Janos, because he is a god of transitions and transformations, you could include the metamorphosis of a butterfly. MK Ultra, I've already showed you about how Janos is linked to the mind, you have the why in the brain. So it just intrigues me when all this transgender and transvestite stuff comes up, and not enough channels mention who their god is. They might say, Baphomet sometimes because obviously the transgender nature because he has breasts but it, the skeleton key is Janos Janos is the god of gods and this is why it just intrigues me the subject I mean let's have a look at the word for transition the process of a period of changing from one state or condition to another so that could be anything that is life to death rebirth Janice is all this. It just blows my, my mind completely. So the process by which a, per, a person permanently adopts the outward or physical characteristics of the gender which they identify as opposed to those associated with their birth sex. The process may or may not involve measures such as hormone therapy and gender reassignment surgery. So you can just see a change of, of an atom nucleus electron from one quantum state to another with a mission or of absorbing or radiation so you can just see how wow is when you know Janus is the god of transitions just what can come under a transition changing from one state to another then you truly grasp why i want to make this complete huge video showing you most of the the topics i've put in because if i put everything in it'd be like 20 30 hours so i've just got to grasp little bits here and there and to show you see you guys what you think about the subjects i'm fascinated by it obviously you can see me excitement and hopefully you guys are too so janos is obviously the god of transition and this is what i'm bringing into about transgender and transvestite it's just mind-blowing as i've just mentioned baphomet in the transformation part I thought I would show you this. It's interesting and it is tied to Janos because Baphomet is Janos. Because Baphomet represents transformation. It's also linked to the rebus of alchemy. Anyway, you've got different depictions here. You have Elpheus's Levi's depiction of Baphomet, the horns and the breasts. And on the right, you've got the Knights Templar depiction of Baphomet with three heads. Obviously, both Janis based. And obviously, on Baphomet, you have solve et coagula, means solution and coagulation, components, elements being synthesized into new substances and of the heavenly, therefore manifesting into the earthly. Janus has the keys to the heaven and earth. <laughs> and it's him, it's just so in your face. You can see it obviously in Rebus, the two headed nature. And also, it's so funny, I was only talking to Nigel from the Devil's Playground 2, another channel that I watch. If you want to check it out, please do. But Rebus comes from the Latin resbina or resbina, meaning dual or double matter, is the end product of the alchemic magnum opus or great work. After one has gone through a stage of purification or putrefaction and purification, separating up opposing qualities, those qualities are united once more in what is sometimes described as a divine hermaphrodite, a reconciliation of spirit and matter of being both a male and female qualities, 
as indicated by the male and female head within a single body. The sun and the moon correspond to the male and female halves, just as the red king and white king are similarly associated. The rebus image appeared in the work Azoth of the Philosophers by Basil Valentine in 1613. Have a look at that date, guys. One add six, yep, is seven. Add one is eight, add three is 11. <laughs> I'm not saying anything, but again, Rebus, Baphomet, all these connections to Janos, and Janos's number is 11. And it always comes back to it. It shows you it's a transformation number, it's a doorway, it's a gateway, it's a portal. And obviously one of the most psychic of numbers. But I'll tie this into something else for you. JK Rowling has that Solvay A coagula tattoo on her wrist. How crazy is that? I've showed you a few things with Harry Potter already linked to 11. But what if JK Rowling add to 11 in Gematria? And it does. But guess what? J is Joanne, and Joanne is Iowans, and which is a derivative of Janos. So yes, JK Rowling is tied to Janos, and as you can see in Gematria, goes to 11. So I've just been talking about how the female and the male represent the sun and the moon. Well, in alchemy, again, the sun and the moon represent gold and silver. Rep you know, I've got the symbols on here. But if we look at the periodic table, gold is AU, 79. Silver is AG, 47. And just look at it if we put AU, AG into Gematria. It comes to 209, that's 11. <laughs> it just blows me away. We're showing you things that are connected to Janos. And then we're showing you even more proof when it goes to Gematria. It all connects to the number 11, the transitional number, the psychic number, the gateway number, a portal, a doorway. And we're talking about this in alchemy and it, the both of them represent 11. I'm just blown away. Gold and silver? It's not like the purple keys are gold and silver to represent the earthly and the heavenly kingdoms hmm and who has them yep janos or saint peter or peter or father or ionus pater hold together by the vocal cords the voice of god and yes that's the vows to l so it's just crazy when you tie these all together i'm just mind blown the doorknob suicides now as you know janice is a god of doorways and you have celebrities being found hung on doors. This is Aaron Swartz. He actually died on the 11th. Hmm, whose date's that? You have Alexander McQueen. Died on the doorknob, according to some. He died the 11th of Feb. You have Chris Cornell. You have Chester Bennington. You have Michael Hutchins. All these celebrities, according to what I found, were found hung from the door. David Carradine. David Bourdain or Bourdain. All these were found hung on the door. And Robin Williams. He's died, his death date was 11th of August. Another 11. So, whether you believe it or not, they were found hanging from the door. Thus, a ritual sacrifice to the god of doorways, Janos. The next bit is ritual sacrifice. Whether you believe these celebrities or actors or dead or not, it doesn't matter. It's still part of the, the fantasy and the spell of the sacrifice to the media. And you have Kobe Bryant and his daughter here. This it is a wow for me. Kobe in Japanese consists of two kanjis. Ko, which means God, and B, which means door. So it could mean door of God or godly door. Hmm, what is Janice God of again? Doorways, archways, transitions, you, you name it. Can you see my point? Especially when you add it to the next bit. So, Kobe's daughter, her name is Gian, or Gianna. It's the feminine, feminine of the masculine, Giano. And Giano in Italian is a form of the name Janos. So he's named his daughter Janos. <laughs> Come on guys, it's playing in your face so there's the ritual other ritual deaths like basically the singer meatloaf who died at the age of 74 which 704 equals 11 and he died in january and he died from the covid and he's famous for obviously battle of hell 
And in the beginning of this pandemic, the early days, COVID supposedly came from a bat. So they love getting that in. And, and another coincidence is his other song, if, if you know it, Wolf at Your Door. Now, what place and person is associated with the wolf and the door? Well, Rome is associated with the wolf. And obviously you have Janos associated with the door. So that just could be a coincidence if you believe them. Another one of the rituals they love to do and use is another death. The Francis Bogdanoff twins. Now, these are very famous for the plastic surgery. So obviously they've had plastic surgery. That's a transformation. So they transform themselves. And one of the, the names that they call is the, the, the lion twins because of the bone structure that got put in place. But what if in Gematra, Bogdanov twins equals 11 to represent the lions? It's just all a big ritual to them, guys. And it just blows me away each time when I find things like this. Have you heard of the doorway effect? Nope. Me either. Well, obviously you did, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but like me, I guarantee you have been affected. So, what is it? Have you ever walked through a door and forgot basically what you were going to do? If the answer is yes, that's the doorway effect. Some might be thinking, come off it Paul, this ain't true. But psychologists believe that walking through a door and entering another room creates what's known as a mental blockage in the brain. Meaning that walking through open doors you know, basically resets the memory to make room for a new episode to emerge. It's crazy, isn't it? And this is generally referred to as the, yep, the doorway effect. I mean, this guy looks like he's had a few too many shocks, but this is Professor Gabriel Ravansky, psychologist from Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, wherever you come from. And uh, Gabriel Ravansky suggests that Passing through doorways is basically the cause of these memory uh, lapses. Entering or exiting through a doorway serves as an, an event boundary in the mind which separates episodes of activity and files them basically away. Recalling the decision or activity that was made in a different room is difficult because it has been compartmentalised. Now, <laughs> you, you, you're all watching and you're watching this and you're thinking, come on, when is he going to mention Janus or that number 11? And I hate to, you know, let you guys down. And here you go. Remember Janice is the number 11 represents the doorway funny that isn't it considering doorway <laughs> equals 11 too do you know what i mean and what are we talking about in this video well i want to be talking about the doorway effect nah doorway effect surely can't add to 11 but wait it has no coincidences though guys so we've all done this. I've just found an example in picture form to show you guys. We've gone in a room, we've said, ah, I need my pen or your phone or something, and you've left it in another room. You then turn around, you've walked out, you've gone into the other room, you're like, what was I doing again? Now, I just found it intriguing because, as you know, I'm heavily researching to Janus, and obviously he is the threshold god, the god in regard to doorways from a Roman perspective. Obviously, the entity behind that has gone through the eons. Now, what's interesting to me in this, is it just internal doors? Is it external doors? And you can obviously see a little picture here of, of, the, of the doorways, of different types of doorways. And obviously... Is it just your internal doors? Now what's intrigued me is what if I just come off researching and I didn't plan this way but it's actually fell beautiful into it. Are we just talking about the main door of the house? 
but from the description of the experiments it, it's just mainly doors so that's why i was just asking that to myself but we have arches and we have triumphal arches these are doorways on a bigger more mass scale do these have a bigger effect whatever they do because i've talked about the logic gates and i'm going to show you something etymology of weird i found that but from this theory of the doorway effect of affecting your memories obviously i just did the video on the circuit boards I, I briefly talked about the arches the logic gate system the boolean all adding up to 11. now we have things like vampires not being able to enter the home without permission we have the passover with the spirit mark the doors with the blood and it represented the 11 on the post we even have a quote in john which is another derivative of janos saying i am the door well what does that point to <laughs> so you can see me intriguement of why i wanted to do this follow-up to the last video i've just done and use an actual physical scientific principle of an experiment stating that yep we lose memories going through doors what else are we losing and this is what i'm going to try and get at in this video so before i go off on a tangent <laughs> i wanted to just formulate an idea on how arches doorways could wipe memory now obviously i showed you this last week hot shoe magnet in regard to arches and the electromagnetism well what if the doorways the arches acted like a neodymium magnet and wiping our memories our short-term memories um it's just an idea i know uh, these uh, magnets can actually wipe credit card things and vhs and they're not powerful enough to do hard drives but obviously if there's a different type of force and how our actually brain works maybe that the magnetic flow of these arches slightly disrupts the memories for us basically forming a path between a to b and this disrupts it so we end up like rick here i feel like my brain short circulating it's just an idea would you remember in my old video the circuit board one i asked could clue anagram for cull be janus a program gone a wall a wall now cull as you know means to reduce the population by selective slaughter could this be their agenda and we talk about depopulation a lot don't we in society now could he be controlling the internet through cern that could be their portal like in the film now on april the 30th 1993 cern put the World Wide web software in the public domain this word it gets wow let's look at that date instead of the 30th obviously just three so three add four add one add nine add nine add three equals 29 two add nine equals you got it 11 <laughs> it's just wow now in tron they have a laser that takes him to the other realm it's called shiva and as you know and as i showed in the other video there is a shiva at cern but i asked a question in Gematra is clue janos it gives me one two five three which equates to 11. as you know cern is cerning us the horned god and cerning us is janos in Gematra, i asked I typed in CERN, it gave me 128, is 11, the doorway, the portal, which we all can agree. Here's the Shiva, like Tron, CERN have one. But look at the arm position. And I've talked about this in many a video. It's the 10, 10 position, or as you can say, the 10, 2 position. But in time wise, you know, 10, 2 is 10 past 10. But let's add that just to let the numbers. 1 add 1 equals, you got it, 11. Now advertisements show it all the time. They say it's for victory. They say it's um, for, for a smiley face. All that rubbish. But it's not. It's a ritual to Janos because it adds to, as you can see in Gematria, 11. Now, <laughs> do you remember the Gotthard Tunnel opening ceremony where they had a Cernanus, the horned god? As we know, it's Janos. They also had a clock there and it kept stopping. Yep, you got it at the 10 to or 10 past 10, which adds to 11. Guys, it, it just blew me away when you put the, all this together. Now, let's have a look quickly at the tunnel. The tunnel was basically opened on the 11th of December 2016. Not just the 11 in your face, but add all the dates. It gives you 
11. Wow. Now, years before, they had another little ritual. 128 people missing, 11 confirmed dead. But even the 128 adds to, you got it, 11. Now, look when it was published. The 26 add 2 and the 1 equate to, you got it, 11. Right, guys, I'm going to cheat now. Instead of showing you some clips and what other names Janos, the entity, goes by, please check out the video that I've made called Janos, the usual suspects. Instead of just picking eat a few gods out of that or putting the old video in that, would would take it up to two, three, four hours. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to mention it and then at least you guys know where to go to check out the other gods he goes by and... It's a good video, so please check it out, Yanis, The Usual Suspects. Remember in the first Janis Rituals video, Janis is the sun and the solstice. So if you've not seen it, check it out. He is also known as Janua Inferni and Janua Coli, that's the name given. Or also known as the Heaven's Gates. According to those who worship him, the sun cycle takes, yep, you got it, 11 years. In other videos, I've shown you Apollo, the god of the sun, is Janos. Well, Apollo is associated with the number 11. And it's just a quick image to show you that I'm not going crazy is associated with number 11. As I was alluding to before, here's the maps of Hollow Earth and other maps that people designed and put out on the interweb. Now, what do you think? Do you think there's more land outside of this realm? It really intrigues me and hopefully it does you too. So, if there's more land, then Where's the gateway? Where's the doorways? Well, what if I could show you? That'd be a thing, wouldn't it? It's not like they worship a god of doorways and portals, is it? So guys, let me show you where the entrances are. Right guys, so I'm using Google Earth. <laughs> oh, well yeah, Google Earth Pro. Now, obviously, the maps that I've just shown are, you know what I mean? Some will say they're fake, some say they're just CGI's, people's series. It's just information to me. You know, I treat everything as information. A lot of people believe there is more land. But yet we never hear, well, how do you get to it? Oh, you just go through a doorway, a gateway. There'll, there'll be specific areas around this realm from to cross over we've talked about how people talk about how aliens are extraterrestrial but not actually from space but from extra land outside some people believe in the ice wall some people don't believe in the ice wall so you can see we're in that topic where a lot of people believe in a lot of different things and i've talked about this a long time ago uh, I've done a video on it a few years back and obviously because my channel got took down I'm just going to a little I want to do a little short video guys to introdu introduce you to the, the theory so obviously most of you would have watched and know who Janice is his CV is so long but for you people that just joined his first and primordial job amongst many things of Janos because he comes under many names the entity behind it comes under many names but in his ego um his persona of persona which means mask <laughs> he's Janice persona Janos persona he's a god of doorways portals and a lot of things so if you worshipped him as your god of gods I think it's is it Jewish day or something like that they actually call him god of gods so if he's you god of gods and they love to do a lot of rituals to him obviously we've had the pandemic which is one big ritual to him i've shown you in other videos that is on my uh page so 
I found this years ago and it still to this day wows me. So if there is more land, you would need doorways. So if you were to name a place after Janos, you would be amazed, wouldn't you? So let's start at the north. So obviously <laughs> the North Pole or wherever it is, is not on maps anymore, but Greenland is to the side. So an island just off Norway is called Janos O. So there's an island. Could that be where a gateway, a doorway is to this extra land? Because on the, on the map, obviously Greenland is at the top and it's in the north. If you look at the Hollow Earth map, and the other maps, it's generally you have an entrance at the top and an entrance at the bottom, so north and south. I've showed you in my map, all map size videos, that north was man-made. But in this principle, as you can see, Greenland, there is an island called Janos. Why call it Janos? Especially in Greenland. Because it's just so interesting and obviously the map is blanked out. So could this be the area where they need to go to find the entrance, the doorway, to extra land. Janice, it would make sense, wouldn't it, guys? It does to me, and it's always wowed me. Now, what if there was another one on the so-called map in roughly the same position, north and south, called Janos Island? It would be more than the coincidence, wouldn't it, guys? It is to me. There we go. <laughs> so not only do you have a Janos O or Janis Island in the north, you have one again. Look in the map; it's patched together. It's all over the place in Antarctica. And just to show you, I'll zoom out to show you. It's Antarctica, and I'm not changing the position or nothing because obviously this could be more south or not. I'm just leaving it how I find it. So obviously people turn it around to show the brain stem. There is obviously South America. And there you have another Yas Island. Always blew me away. Always blew me away because on an old video, this won't show up. One of these islands is called Shortcut Island. So it's intriguing that isn't it and this is basically of this video because what i'm seeing is a lot of the maps going around again people talking about more land more land and when i say well how would you get to that land and it's like oh yeah doorway gateway and you go well you know the god is janos and crickets fly again because not a lot of people know who the entity is and it's just an entity that is just his roman name and there's two islands both north, both south, facing each other on a so-called map. Obviously, <laughs> people believe in different shapes. Obviously, I'm not. I don't believe the globe. But I'm just showing you on the principle. I'm using the tools to, you know, to to show you this. You have a Janis Island in the south, and again, let me just type it in. You have a Janis Island in Greenland. So you can just see that the the, the trajectory it takes it's near enough in a straight line and there you go so i just wanted to include this again like i said it's been in little snippets of videos on the old channel and i did a couple of years ago i just did one full video on it and people obviously people's time's precious time <laughs> chronos link to Janos. um it, it's just intriguing to me and it's still just to this day that a lot of people talk about more land more land extraterrestrials live in this place that map's fake that map's fake but if there is more land how would they get into this is it just aerial route or are they sailing or taking whatever vessels because we don't know if the the entrance ways are underneath the water to get to this we just don't know but it's intriguing that you have two islands named after the god of doorways and portals and people are talking about more land how would you get to it 
Well, there you go, guys. I believe these are where the gateways are or doorways to this extra land because they've named it after Janos. Right, guys? So I've just showed you the locations of the doorways, the portals, whatever way you want to look at it. Yanis Islands. Why name it that? Because obviously it's a god of doorways and portals, the god of gods. So I'm paying homage and the colony entrances after him. Now what you're seeing on the screen on the left is the flag of Greenland and on the right is the so-called alleged new flag of Antarctica made by a, a American journalist called Evan Townsend and they've named it True South. Now, it's intrigued me. Now, if you, if you turn them flags on the sides and you show them both the emblems, you can see the dualism. It's like two sides. It's like Janice heads. And it's like, wow, really, that's so in your face. But that's not it, guys. What I found absolutely blew me away. It's like they've left maps to show you the locations f for this possible entrances doorways portals to this extra land and it's been hidden in plain sight in an occult symbol so how did i find it well my brain works <laughs> i don't know how it works but i was looking at both flags and obviously i showed you the dual dualism and how it's janice's head but i thought you know what can i mix them together can, can, what symbol would these both together make what would they recreate and i was blown away what i found now i'm going to show you in a sec guys just look at it and to, to me it's no other than this symbol i'm just about to show you now so guys here is the image i believe it shows now it's a, it's known as as above so below the rosicution symbol i think it's hermes trismegistus but just look at it it's got ubros which is janus and also two faces as above so below and we're talking about an entranceway on the map of north and south just look at it do the colors resemble anything here you go guys i'm going to go sit and show you now just what i believe so they have the greenland flag doesn't fit perfectly but you get the gist of what i'm trying to show you fits nice shows you the line let's bring up the antarctic flag even the colors match <laughs> you have what uh, the white at the top blue at the bottom guys this is, to me, could be like a roadmap, a hidden occult symbol showing you where these entrances, these portals could be. I'm just blown away. Hopefully you guys are. You can see where I'm trying to get at. I believe they've just hid this symbol of the gateways like a map in this occult symbol. And if you know what you're looking at, you know where the entrance is to this new other world or inner earth or whatever you believe it is in this symbol so we have a famous saying don't we a favorite saying as well <laughs> take your pick that they love to show us the truth in plain sight in tv in films and that when i was growing up i was a big sci-fi geek and one of the shows i loved was stargate you know sg1 well in that show they used to have two stargates the alpha gate and the the beta gate one of them was in antarctica and the other one was found in egypt well i'm talking about in this part as having two gates to represent janice's heads and also those symbols so isn't it a coincidence that in stargate when it's a, a show about portals traveling through wormholes a gateway that they say there's two gates on earth and the ancients built them it's just you know <laughs> one of those things i just love to include hopefully guys you're enjoying it so i'm going to finish with this guys because it's been going on for a long knowledge knowledge is janos comes from gnosticism as the most basic level the terms gnostic and gnosticism refer to the belief that is rooted in special knowledge the term gnosis is where we get the english word knowledge from gnosticism is in its broadest sense it's about a religious view based on the claim about knowledge so obviously gnosis gnosis is the no in knowledge now <laughs> gnos is an energy that has not been used in eons of time and a gnos comes in it bridges the divine and the human and as a creator you allow gnos to flow in instead of being bound and restricted by problems and challenges you simply allow gnos to come in 
to present the clear and open solution well if they are blocking and controlling the waves and the doors they're stopping the gnos coming in but let's have a look at ledge from knowledge well it's fixed across a door a gate it's part of a door a gate and who is the god of doorways and gates and tied to the cathars also it is yanos so yanos is knowledge gnosis gnosis Nosledge knowledge. Janos has January, but he also has every first day of each month. Crazy that people don't realize that. Now, on the first day of each month, it's a common tradition for people to say, Rabbit, rabbit, first thing in the morning. Now, this phrase, the phrase is supposed to bring good luck for the rest of the month. Alternatively, you might say the phrase white rabbit twice. Now have a look in that in Jamatra, white rabbit, white rabbit. It comes to 11. That's just a pure coincidence, guys. Let's ignore all these 11s that's tied to Janos. Now we see a lot of people talking about, oh, we're going down the rabbit hole in regard to knowledge, the rabbit hole. Oh, the rabbit hole adds to 11 too. <laughs> That's just, again, I hate saying it. <laughs> anyway, the rabbit hole is Janos. He's knowledge. He's the doorway you appear through. Crazy, isn't it? Now let's talk about Matrix. Follow the white rabbit. White rabbit tattoo on the shoulder. He, Neo's told to, you know, watch out for her, follow her. When they knock at his door, room 101. Hmm, 101. 11. Just again, a pure coincidence, guys. And one of the most famous scenes also is Red Pill, Blue Pill. Oh, come on, Paul. Red Pill, Blue Pill wouldn't be 11 in your match room, would it? Because it's a doorway. It's a transition between staying as you are or learning your true self. <laughs> Never mind, eh? Now, history, that is a well-known term that people in the community love to use. History is his story. Well, and we'll also talk about the Jesuits. Well, it's not like Janus appears on their seals and is their god. We'll ignore that. So, for me, IHS is his. It's history. History is his story. His story is his tour, which is his door. Remember, tour means gate. Or door or portal so history is his door now a lot of people use gematria and again it equates to 11 because it's leading you somewhere it's transitioning your knowledge anytime you're learning new information new light new gnost you are accessing the doors his door his tour history right guys coming up is my thoughts they call me the black sheep you know they call me the black sheep hello and welcome <laughs> right guys yep this is what the flock tv you might not remember him because it's been a while <laughs> been a while but hey <laughs> when you do a video about janos and you think it'll take you a few days r roll on two and a half week and you like you have to finish it i could have kept going for hours and hours and hours and hours but, you know, it's like war and pieces it is. So I thought I have to find a cutoff point. So that's what I've done. I maybe do a part two, part three, four, five, six. But I just wanted to put good information in because a lot more people are talking about Yalos now. And I'm even I'm even being told to research him myself. <laughs> oh god. Which is hilarious. And also I'm being told, I'm being said, watch this video, this is good. <laughs> and it was my video. <laughs> so all these fun, good things happen. But <laughs> what can I say about the video? I want to keep my thoughts short because it's been long enough as it is. It's well over two hours. But if you ever wanted a video to show you the significance of Janos, it's this. Yeah, seriously, there's information I've left out. I could make 10 more videos. So, you know what I mean? I had to find, like I said, I had to find a cut-off point. I did that. But hopefully now, if you ever want to share the video on what Yanis is, you can say, here we go. You know what I mean? Because I have a lot of content. And please watch the other stuff because there's so much that isn't in this video that's in there. 
and like I said, I could have been going for hours and hours and hours, but you need that switch off point, you know, four or five hour videos, you know what I mean? My concentration span is like a gnat, so you know what I mean? It's like, I want to go into the next topic, I, want, I need to do this topic, and I was... I was like, yeah, yeah, it's good, this. And next minute, I'm like, oh, my God, that's... I want to do a video on that. Oh, I can't finish it yet because I'm doing this. So I thought, you know what? Enough's enough. So hopefully, you've enjoyed it. There's a lot of information. I'm not going to go over the information. I just wanted to say thank you for the support. Thank you for the patience. Um, thanks for anyone that's newly subscribed. It's, you know, you, you want to maybe give me your time. <laughs> You know what I mean? A lot of people will call me this, they call me that, but hey, we can't please everyone, can we? And when you start to reach more people, you do pick up more and more of people who don't seem to understand. And that's cool, because we all have our own perspectives, and this is what this video is basically about, showing you the significance of Janus. I left out a, a, a lot of chunk about all the different types of gods he, you know, other deities he hears. Because if I'd have put even more in, it'd have been four hours long. So if you ever want to watch that, it's called The Usual Suspects. And like the other videos, I've put certain ones in that you can go and watch if you've not watched it. But please just go to my playlist on the channel and look under Janice. Janos, The Usual Suspects, I think it's called. And they're all there. Uh, you know what I mean? I've been talking this for two, three, four years. It, it feels... It just feels like time is flu, as, it, as the saying goes. And I've been screaming about it for years. I've been posting on it for years, as most of you will know. Social media have been doing the same. A lot of the truthers, not a lot of the truthers, sorry. Some of the channels out there from YouTube and social media mock and laugh at me because they, they said Janice was insignificant. And I kept per pers persevering with it because... What I see, I wanted to show the people that I wasn't crazy, how he's connected to this, how he's connected to the number 11. I mean, it is mind-blowing. I mean, think about it. He is tied to Apollo. Apollo is to number 11. What was the first moon mission? Apollo 11. The transitioning line from space, from Earth to space, is called the Kármán line. In Gematria, yep, you got it, it is 11. So this has to be something, I can't, you know what I mean, sometimes when we don't see something, you know when you see a video, or you see a person's theory, and you're like, how did they see that, I just don't see it, and we, we, we've all done it, and it'll always happen again, because like I was talking about in that the Oculus video, we only see what our eyes let us see, and more like we let in by learning, 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 we, we, we adapt and we see more, so people just won't see what you see. So when I've been doing all this for so many years on Janice and people have called me, they've gone, I'm still here. I'm still showing you the significance of him. Um, and I keep people always asking me, who is he? Who is Janice? Well, he could be like Clue from Tron, which was a program left in charge to run it. We could be in assimilation. He could be the AI pro the program in charge. His name is... One of his oldest names is I A A I. Some people have said he could be the demiurge. He could, he could, he could well be. I like leaving people with just a little bit to go and research themselves and figure out that last bit to theorise on what they think he is. Because he's ever-changing. And he's not just evil and he's not just good. He has many faces, just like us. But when we're talking about Janus and we want to learn something and talk to something, he is what connects us. He is the key. He is the skeleton key. Now, if you research certain gods, you will only get to so far. I found Janus through Genoa. Found out he was named after him. Blah, blah, and it just snowballed from there. And over the years, I found so much more. Then I found out about number 11. And I've even found even more because that's opened the doorway. Everything has a door. All the energy, all the waves have to travel through it. You have the key. And that's how we learn. <laughs> we even have in the Bible, Jesus or God talking about how he's, I am the door. And it's in John. John is a drift of Janos. I think it is, if I remember, I am the door. So he's crazy. 
And we, and we look at the Bible. By meaning two Bible. Two, two, you know, two books, two Bibles. Two, who's got two faces? And that's where a lot of people do get, you know, misconception of it. He hasn't just got two faces. He's had three. He's had four. And I wouldn't surprise if it's all five or six out there. He is just basically the entity behind a lot of it. He is a god of gods. Remember, Noah, Janice was the first pope. You still got the ship, the Tiber Island. It's connected to Asclepius too. What more do you need for the rabbit hole? Is the rabbit hole himself. It's the person who's standing at the door letting you in. He is the rabbit hole himself. And I couldn't make another video now in my thoughts I might go through everything I've talked about because it would add another hour, two hours. So I just wanted to keep it brief. And if people... <laughs> You know what I mean? Because we'll f I sometimes fall asleep on a long video. It's really, really, really hard when you, you, you're having a grasp. But luckily enough, people have a pause button and you can keep coming back and come to it. And hopefully you've enjoyed the information I've put in. It's not the case for me just like, right, I'm copying and pasting from that video and putting in. I've put a lot of new stuff in. And it's just trying to get it so it makes a little bit of sense instead of just video after video after video. And you're like, yeah, I can understand its significance, but it's not following you know following the story following the pattern so i've tried to do that it does hopefully it's been successful and hopefully people who want to know what 11 means how it's connected to janos i can see it and believe me when i say i've left a lot out i've left a you know a crazy amount out but like i was telling to uh stay who will be in the ch chat and others where's your cut off point what goes from, from, you know, just over a two hour video to four hour, five hour. And I had to do it. And it's, it feels like forever since I've, I've uh, you've seen me. And I missed the interaction in the chat when I do the premiere. So I thought, you know, what, I'm going to finish it after this history bit. Because that's what blew me away is when you start looking at things a little bit different. I've never really looked at the word Taurus field before. We all have it. Or everything has a Taurus field. And Tor means gate or portal. So we basically are one big portal of light, information, and the waves are out there. And if our doors are locked, the information won't get in. So it's just intriguing when you switch to that tour. It's a gate or it's a portal. And then you've got the word his story. It's his tour, it's his gate. I've showed you enough in this <laughs> I'm going to say short video. I've showed you enough in this video to show you like, the significance of it. And I'm glad I stood my ground. Didn't let people who were mocking me, uh, passing memes and different things of, oh, he's, he's talking about Giannis again. I don't just talk about Giannis. Go to, my, go to my channel, my YouTube channel that you're watching this on. You'll find a lot of topics on there. There's more topics in there that a lot. And it's what harms me as a channel. Because people like to go to the channel for this. And I try and cover a lot of it. And that does hurt me. But it's who I am. I like to look at everything. Give my opinion. Try and be objective as I can. I like this, Janice. And if people don't want to uh, research him, don't. It, it's up to you. But I want to know who's behind the god and it's, these are not me saying for instance if i say janice is apollo it's not me just theorizing janice is apollo i'll find other people who've written books and people say oh, well history is one big lie i know it is so people can't counteract your argument or your theory with their own theory we've got your uh, information on internet and, and books well you just said yeah it doesn't matter i'm right and that's what people will say people say no you're not right but I'm right and I've got the information from the same places as you've got yours. That is the point. The truth is your own perspective. We're all on that path. Look at a judgment period. Where did he go through? Doors. Who's the God of Doors? Again, who's the Vatican? Who's the first king? The pandemic's named after him. It's a ritual to him. The Mu variant. The, every variant is basically to him in Gematria. And... It just like, wow. 
And now I'm seeing more and more and more people talking about Rihanna's. Uh, and it was funny. It's, uh, I commented on some social media posts um, because someone sent it me, you know, because it's obviously got Yanos in. And the, the Muslims have liked my, what I said, because they said, you need to go and research Yanis. <laughs> so uh, here I am. I'm going to research Yanis. And I, I, like I said, I everyone's got an ego. I've got a little bit of an ego. I, I'm honest. Do you know what I mean? I put the hours in. I work hard, sharing what I can find. I love. I do it for nothing. I do it for free. And when someone says that, I'm like, <laughs> I've got a bit of the head come out to say what. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It's just all in fun. Uh, but I had to make a, a video, so th that was the reason. More, when more and more people are talking about it, do you want to know the information? So I thought, well, instead of sending six videos that I've done on Yalis, if I've got one big video that's got a lot in it, it still leaves them to go and look at other stuff too. And that's the beauty of it. I don't want to just give you a four or five hour video and say, this is fat. This is still not fat. This is just the information I found. And that is the beauty of it. I never say this is fact or truth or whatever way you want to look at it. I'm just showing you. And I just love you guys. Um, do you know what I mean? The information, the comments. I've had comments again this week about how great the comments are on, on, on YouTube. It makes me proud. Because I'm seeing more and more people saying, oh, we can't go here, can't go there, can't read this. Because they're trolling, trolling, trolling. There's no better guys than the people who, who's, you know, supporting me, uh, like family and friends. It's just, it's just a proud moment when, you know, we are doing something special on this channel. Because you can look at my content and the comments, you learn so much from them. Because you're passing on your information. You're opening up your doors and letting your information that you've, you know flow. And it imprints, it leaves a mark. More doors we know, more information we know, and it basically gives you more options. One track mind, some people are opening up the same door. You're only going to see the same thing. And there's only so much information you can keep in one room. If you've got access to more rooms, more doors, it, you know, it's just going to, you know, give you better influence on what's going on in this realm. And in this video, I've gone from the Great Vowel Shift a period that not many people know of, and it's the greatest reset ever. They changed the language, the sciences, how we spoke, everything in this five, six hundred year period. People always talk about the I and the J. Why is that on maps? Why is that on coins? And I'm showing you, because Yanis is the Kalends. And people say, well, Juno is the Kalends. Juno is Janos. You know, I, sh I should have put that in as well, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Is how much you're going to put in? So, Janus is in charge of the Kalends calendar. That's why they changed it for him. They brought him from the 11th month, 11th to the 1st. Because he has to be first in their minds. Do you know what I mean? In their minds, he is the God of Gods. They pray to him first. Because what? Was, why? When you pray, you have to go through the gates. He's in charge of the gate, so, you know, he gets the, the first blessings. So he's a god of gods. That's what intrigues me. How can a god is classed as insi in insignificant have a wide reach? And that's what people say, oh, Janus is this, Janus is that. Janus is just the Roman name of the entity. But he is the skeleton key. He's like the keypad and you have a password. He is the password to, and that leads you to more information. It's crazy how much information I found. Like I said, I was looking into Tartaria. I looked at Genoa. I mean, you people talking about Genoa and um, Tartaria and the two eagles and the griffins. It's all Yanas. And I typed in and I can split it up on the Latin convert and got Liguria. Never heard of it before. Found out it, Genoa was the capital and it just went from there. It is an exciting topic. I get really excited about it. Obviously, some people don't share my passion in this. But how can I, as, you know, a seeker of my, not just my own truth, but, you know, trying to, you know, show more light, 
shower more light on on a topic stop researching something because it, it, it hurts someone else it's, it's not hurting me and if it triggers people it's triggering you for a reason do you know what i mean and this is what i love about the topic gannus because it covers so much like i said i could have done a 20 hour video literally there is so much information on it it's mind-boggling i first started researching him about three years ago i, I you know time flies three four years ago properly and there was hardly anything on it and he's controlling <laughs> the waves the frequencies and the information it's just flowing it's it, it's just breathtaking and like i said i get really excited about it because when people talk about things it <laughs> it, you know it, it's to him i mean water is life and the main aqueduct into rome <laughs> there is 11 aqueducts 11 why why 11 and the length of it was it equated to 11 it was crazy so I, there's a lot of things i didn't put in i mean we're talking about gematria as to 11 and people would be screaming well you're using gematria wrong I've not. Who, who who's telling you the rule book on Gematria? Who tells you how to use it? That's what I'm telling you. You would have got some person at the beginning when Gematria was done. This is how you do it, right? I have to follow you. Okay. Uh, will you put your finger in the fire as well, please? Oh, oh okay. Because that's what we have to do. Because you've told me I, I make my own path in this world. I try to. I don't take the red pill. I don't take the blue pill. Oh, ignore that's eleven. I'll make my own doorway. And maybe if we learn enough, we break. And if we, as truth is, we must be breaking our own doors, creating new, fresh doorways in the veil. Because we see more. We see more than people. And it, I talk about the truth where I've learned from how our eyes are frequencies and we see different things when, you know, when more light comes in. But we're kicking doors down. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's crazy. And the 11 is a gateway to transition but it's also when they do a ritual they love to get 11 in it because it's tilt the hat to janos and they try and get 11s in there somewhere and since i've showed people that they're like wow it, you know what i mean it makes sense this do you know what i mean like the baldwin shootings that was an 11 so like i said there's always so much i can put in a video but it's my excitement. I just want to share with you a topic that I found highly fascinating. That is a skeleton key to Allah. We're talking about he appeared in Sumeria. I've showed you in the past that we're talking about the, the, the Mandela effect. Some people believe in it. Some people don't. Different realities. Who, who access? How do you get from one reality to another reality? You need a portal or a doorway or gateway. He's that. People talk about how these realities change because of CERN. He's CERN in us. And it has to be 11. Okay, we'll ignore that. <laughs> so you mean you can... You're putting up layer after layer after layer after layer of information showing you just how significant and wow is this research on Janos. Yes, it's my own personal perspective and people will look at different and find even more than me because that's how it happens. So we, do, we just see sometimes certain things. But it's that journey. It's that transitioning. And that's why, he, like I said, he's a god of gods. This is why they do transgender because it's a transition. He's a god of transitions. And it's a process. It's from metamorphosis. And it's an honour to him, the god. Might not be our God, but I'm just showing you the information. And if people can see how much has gone into this, it's totally ages to make this. <laughs> it really has. I'm like, my head's battering, my eyes are hurting. I'm like, I need to get some enough in for people to realise, wow. Because when you watch a video on this, Janice is the pineal gland, we'll ignore that, because a lot of people talk about the pineal gland, de you know, calcifying it, activating the pineal gland, and I go, it's Janice, and it's crickets. Janice, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Janice is a pandemic. And people say, well, that's just your perspective, Paul. I know it is. That's the beauty of it. But he's the god. The pandemic making you wear face masks, the inoculations, all to him. 
for the cities that went into major lockdowns all had arches. Why are arches staying up there? Why are they staying there? Because it's, it's, it's helping to control the mind, like the doorway effect. And circuit board cities as well. Arches, it's like a transistor. The transistor looks like Baphomet. Again, connected. Freebus, like alchemy, alchemy. Again, <laughs> then you had Harry Potter tied to it. I could see how I get excited about it and why there's so much content. And for instance, the evil, the god, is where capitalism, the Western capitalism, was invented in Genoa. It's not like that flag is a, like the major institution that people talk about with being the financial centre of the world. We have the f spiritual, the religious being Rome, London and Washington. And they say that's IHS, the three thorns. It's got the English flag. Oh no, it's not the English flag, it's a Genoese flag. It's a St. George's flag, all the connections with St. George. St. Genoa had a colony in Turkey. The Black Death, the plague, came through Genoa, but also it came from a place in um, Russia, the steppes, Mongolia, China, where they had a colony up there as well. These are all in the videos, but like I said, it's very hard when you've only got so much time to watch video after video on the same topic like this. So that's why I just wanted to put as much in so you can see, wow, yeah, I can see where you're getting from. And that might whet your appetite then for, to look at the other videos. So that was the goal of this video. And I'm sorry I've not <laughs> felt, it felt like I've been years away from you guys. But you can see now from this video, it, it took a lot to make. It took a lot of me out of me as well, but excitement. Because, you know, a lot of you have seen most of the bits. But you forget, we all do. I, I was talking to uh, Steve in the, in the week and Jay as well and I was saying I forgot I made this video <laughs> the, on you know the Genoa conundrum it's crazy the first bank the first bank like Rothschild State Bank was made in Genoa and the, 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 the people behind it went to Geneva and then he went from Geneva to London taking the flag with him it, it, it's just it is crazy so hopefully you've enjoyed it like I said, I don't want to keep talking now. I've took 24 minutes of your time as well. Uh, I just appreciate the support, guys. And please, if, if you've enjoyed this, please hit the like. It, you know, it gives me a lift. It says, yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, what's the worst? It goes into your, your, your like column. That's it. You know what I mean? It just should get, you know, I need fuel. I know I need to know you liked it. <laughs> and if you shared it, if you recommend it, because, you know, more and more people have to see these topics because most channels are not talking about it. You won't get me on here demanding, calling other channels out. No, making videos and content is hard enough it is. If you're calling out other people, it just means you haven't got no content. And, you know what I mean, it's hard enough as it is. It's, you know what I mean, life's hard. Just crack on with your own information and channels and information and share it. Share it. It's what we're here for. If some didn't share something to me once, I'd have never got to it. So, you know, in this, you've got ties to Tartaria, giants, uh, the banking system, capitalism. <laughs> the reach is everywhere, the Vatican. It is crazy. And more and more people now are waking up to Janos and saying, wow. You know what I mean? Janos is Baphomet, Baal. He's tied to Kush and Babel. And that great vowel shift was what, like, one of the turning points for me because finding out that they've changed the vowels to another god, which was Janos, and they had to change everything. That's why it has a lot of 11s in it. It's crazy when you're thinking about it. Um, so, guys, please like, share, subscribe if you've not. I know sometimes they'll unsubscribe you, and I appreciate your patience, and I'll be in the chat. <laughs> so stay safe. Always wear a smile and pay it forward. Please do one good deed today. Right, guys, take care. Bye now. Bye.